Hey, it's Sovereign Student here, and today I'm going to showcase my finished version of my version of a snake game using JavaFX and Scene Builder. So let's actually just check what I have for now. I have my game. I can check restart or start. Whenever I start the game, I have my snake, which contains a red head and a black tail. Whenever I eat some food, it will spawn at a different place, and I will increase my tail length by one. I am able to lose the game by hitting the edge of the screen, like that. I can then restart. Let's see if I am able to demonstrate hitting my own tail. Definitely not the best snake player, but let's see. There we go. So now I should be able to hit my tail like that. And the game will end as well. So what I'm simply doing Compared to last time, there will be a link up here somewhere where you can go check the first video where I'm discussing like the basic movement of the snake. But now I'm simply checking if... So this is the game loop. We have a timeline. Where I add a position of the snake, move the snake head, and then move all the snake bodies. I check around that I'm able to change direction because I'm only able to change direction once. Otherwise it will kind of screw up. Then I'll be able to like move inside the snake. I'm checking if I ate some food. And I'm adding one game tick, so adding one game loop. And I'm simply checking if the game is over by calling check if game is over on the snake head. And I'll check if game is over works by simply doing checking if the position of the snake is outside the boundaries, like the edge of the screen. And then we also check if snake hit itself. By simply going through the latest positions it's been and check if the snake head is inside one of the positions of the snake body. By simply going through the latest position array. So I have an array containing all the movements of the snake head. And check if the snake head is at the same position as it was previously. At the X amount of snake tail. So if I have a snake tail that's five long. I would check if the snake head had been inside is always back into one of the five positions it was in previously in the five game six. Then we call the eat food every frame as well to check whether or not the snake head is inside the position of the food. If it is, we eat the food and we increase the size of the snake by one. And then we spawn a new food or technically just move it, but it's, it's similar to spawn a new one. And what's interesting by moving it is we simply need to check if it's inside the snake. Because if it's inside the snake, it's kind of dumb. So we need to make sure it's outside the snake. So what we simply do is we call this is food inside snake method, which simply goes through and checks with a while loop. So while the food is inside the snake, we would create a new random position. And so we, if we're inside snake, create a new position. If we're still inside snake, create a new position. Now we're not inside the snake, leave it there. And by this we're simply just checking if the food is inside any of the positions of the snake tail, or the snake head for that matter. And we should have a quick look at the food. The food is just an object, which gives, so I have some parameters of its position, which pane it's painted on, and the size of the food, which in this case just the same size as the snake. And then I'm able to create this random spot for the new food, where I simply just get a position by using the random from Java to Util package. Get a random position and then multiply. So I have, because my screen is 600 by 600 large and my food is 50 by 50 large, I would be able to have 12 positions. And let's say, for example, we get the number of zero. Oh, that's a bad example, but let's see if we had a random. So let's say we've got the random position one, then we would say one times 50. So it would be put at Let's say if we got fit one by bigger, both of them we get the position of 50 by 50 for the food. And because all our grid kinda is working inside this 50, 50 by 50 square grid, we're able to hit it precisely with a snake. So that's pretty much the changes that's been so far. Last like last time I will put a link to a uh, and a space where you can get all the source code and check it out yourself and maybe get it running yourself because I actually think you would learn quite a bit more by going through the code yourself. And I'm not claiming this code is perfect. It definitely isn't. 
but it's kind of, I think it's kind of interesting because it's quite different from a lot of the other ways of creating snake I've seen because I've seen some solutions where they create a, a two-dimensional array and then like create all the snake game in the back and then just draw it this array or some people have like a squared array where all of them are invisible squares and then you're just drawing or making instead of like I'm actually creating squares and moving them you would have these squares being drawn or being set by to visible or invisible but this is my version of the snake game using JavaFX and scene builder if you enjoyed my tutorial please leave a like and subscribe and I hope you enjoy my snake game as much as I do because it's actually, it's actually quite fun. So I highly encourage anyone that want to try it, get the code and try to get it running yourself. See ya.